Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us courtesy of Brian, KM6GO, and his question has to do with uh, various factors that might create attenuation. He says, my understanding is that you might be transmitting at 100 watts, but your output at the antenna might only be 50 watts. How do you maximize your output? Well, we can rephrase this a little bit. If you've got a 100 watt radio, okay, 100 watts, and it goes to an antenna, um, and only 50 watts is out, that means that the attenuation, or another word for that would be diminution, but attenuation sounds better, is um, 50 out over 100 in is um, you've gone down by half, or we say minus 3 dB, okay, dB, capital B. Okay, now what can cause this attenuation? Okay, lots of things. Let, well, let's just draw that picture again. We've got a transmitter. We've got a cable and an antenna. Okay, we'll assume this is 50 ohms. So, you can, the tuner, let's suppose that you're trying to tune a very bad mismatch. That would mean that the SWR pushes power back, tuner pushes it back at this, it comes back and forth, and every time it transmits the feed line, it loses a little bit. So you're going to get some heating in the tuner, and you're going to get heating in the a coax if you've got a high SWR. If you've got a low SWR, you're okay. So you want your SWR low, meaning close to one-to-one -one as you can get it. You will never get perfect one-to-one -one match unless you have some really cool tuner that exactly matches the reactive parts of the antenna. The antenna should be 50 ohm input. If it is not 50 ohms, it's going to reflect some power back down uh, to the station. And you get back to that tuner and you start heating your coax a little bit, okay? That is one form. Another is the coax itself. The coax is copper wire. And the thinner the coax, um, the higher the resistance. So you get copper losses in here. And uh, you can look that up. We'll take the ARRL antenna book. And this book says nominal characteristics of commonly used transmission lines. Okay. And we'll take RG8X. We'll take one of the RG8Xs over here. And we'll look at attenuation matched loss at 100 feet. Okay. At 100 megahertz. Well, let's look at 10 megahertz because that's kind of more, it'll be in between. Okay, uh, so somewhere between um, 10 megahertz and 100 megahertz, let's say 10, you're going to lose 0.8.9, maybe 1 dB of loss. If you get all the way up here to 100 megahertz, you're losing uh, 2.3 dB, which is close to 3 dB. So you can tell from this table and the length um, of it, and you can take that linearly. So if this loss down here is 2 to 1 at uh, RG9, half of this length, uh, you can run that by uh, 50%. You'd have to get the actual loss back on the thing. But the point being that um, if you lose 2.1, uh, if you lose... 2.1, let's see, that's uh, match loss dB per 100 feet. 2.1 dB for 100 feet would be 1.05 dB for 50 feet. Okay? So it's linear in that sense. 
this back here because I often make reference to that page. So you have ohm losses, so you want low loss coax. Okay, SWR, uh, as low as you can get it, low loss coax, and I might add in connectors. The RG, um, 259 slash uh, R239 scratch that part that isn't any good I'm forgetting my point here okay low loss low ox, uh, coax so you've got here your you can get losses in the coax if you get too much loss in the coax go to a higher grade of coax. So go from RG8X to RG213. Okay, they're both easy to work with coaxes. You could do the equivalent LMR 240 to LMR 400 if you're doing times microwave stuff. That's a four. Okay, so you've got coax losses, you've got SWR losses, and then we can look at the antenna itself. The antenna has two kinds of resistance. There is ohmic, which is heating losses, heating the antenna, and radiation resistance. Now the radiation resistance is the equivalent resistance uh, that the antenna will radiate. So um, the measured resistance of the antenna, measured at RF, is the ohmic losses plus the uh, radiation resistance. You want this low and this high compared to the impedance because they're going to sum to 50 ohms. Okay, now if you use a mag loop or something like that, the mag loop has uh, ohmic resistance is pretty low. The radiation resistance is extremely low. So that would mean most of your uh, signal would end up as heat unless you have such a low loss in the antenna that um, the radiation resistance uh, comes, <clears throat> comes to be above the ohmic resistance. So this is where you run into trouble with uh, mag loops and so on, okay? So I think this shows that we've got the three, the SWR-induced losses, the coax-induced losses, and the antenna-induced losses. And you can affect all of these by making good antennas, uh, cutting them to the right length. They don't have to be real thick wire. Um, a number 14 or 16 wire is probably fine. Uh, number 12 is more than adequate. Uh, with good coax, RG8X is good for HF for fairly short runs, or you can go RG213 or LMR400. Uh, there are other kinds of coax out there too, including a brand from Italy called uh, Messi and Paolini. And you can get coax of any length with or without connectors uh, at DX Engineering, uh, Ham Radio Outlet, uh, The Wireman, uh, plenty, plenty of places out there have it. I recommend against ordering your coax over the internet unless you know what dealer you're dealing with, like Coax USA or USA Coax, MPD Digital, and so on are, are reputable suppliers. The some of the Chinese coax is terrible. I remember working with, I, I had been asked to put a connector on a piece of what I was told was LMR 400 coax. What it was was a Chinese uh, coax and the aluminum that was used inside of it was so brittle that when I tried to cut around it, it would crack off. I had a heck of a time putting that connector on. And uh, this guy had invested quite a bit of money in what he thought was LMR 400, but it was a cheap Chinese knockoff. So get good American-made coax. It may be made in China, but if you get it from Belden uh, or anything through DX Engineering, they include their own branded coax. 
uh, in there uh, from HRO and so on, get good quality coax. Coax is expensive, I know that, but you get what you pay for. <coughs> okay, how do you maximize your output? Now, I want to point out one other thing when you're trying to maximize your output. And we ran into this problem at Field Day, which was held very recently. Uh, and that is, make sure that you go into your owner's manual. And I always keep my owner's manual right next to my radio. Go into your owner's manual for where it tells you to set the audio gain. Follow those instructions exactly. And avoid the temptation of turning it up too much. And the other is to set up your compression properly. I always use compression. It about doubles the level, the effective level of my signal. I was at field day and they were having trouble at the go to station with no power out. And they had the uh, mic gain turned all the way up to the point where it distorted horribly and the radio uh, protective circuits shut it down. I brought the, uh, rate of the uh, mic gain down and suddenly the thing started to work and, and they got some contacts with that. It all was just moving a little slider about a half an inch and it did the job. Fortunately, I knew which slider to move. So there you have it. Uh, please enter the giveaway that we have and please also uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, click like and uh, please share it. And also, if you'd like to help support this financially so we can continue to bring you these videos, please go to decastlercom support and look for a way that might work for you. Until we next meet, 73.